Disney's Wish is here and I'm here to break down the ending for you. What I think is really interesting about Wish that I learned through the art book and Disney 23 magazine is the fact that the story was conceived to be the first fairy tale. You see, the story is meant to take place within the medieval era. The creators purposely set the time period to be roughly a century or two before most of Disney's early fairy tales take place. So chronologically, it is the very first among the films of Disney animation. So the exploration around wishes and magic and fairy godmothers is all meant to be an origin story for the rest of Disney's fairy tales. A direct quote from Wish's art book even states that the filmmakers behind Wish envisioned Asha as the very first of Disney's fairy tale heroines to wish upon a star. Asha's act of faith and hope makes her the predecessor of thousands of the studio's dreamers. Okay, but before we dive into who Asha is, and what her transformation was throughout Wish, I think it's important to start by explaining the Kingdom of Rosas. You see, Wish takes place in a city where dreams are said to come true. And that city exists near the Iberian Peninsula, which is now modern day Spain and Portugal. When King Magnifico came to power within the Kingdom of Rosas, people from Europe, Northern Africa, and the Middle East flocked to the kingdom to have their wishes come true. And Asha is a perfect example of how that kingdom became a melting pot. Her mother is from Northern Africa, while her father descends from the people from the Iberian Peninsula. But while the kingdom believed King Magnifico to be a benevolent, kind, and thoughtful leader, the truth was is that he was hoarding the wishes for himself. At the age of 18, citizens were able to give their wish to King Magnifico. They would forget about that truth within themselves. While Magnifico would hoard, contain, and confine all of those orbs of wishes. Once a month, he would make some of those dreams come true, but the grand majority would be kept within his observatory. Only when Asha applied to be Magnifico's apprentice did she learn the truth that most of the wishes that existed within Magnifico's control would not be granted. It's kind of surprising that that didn't come up sooner. I mean, how were people not realizing that they weren't going to be able to get through enough based off of the number of wishes that Magnifico was receiving? But as soon as Asha learned this dark truth, she knew that she had to do something about it. Asha wasn't sure how she was going to change her kingdom. She knew that King Magnifico was handling wishes in an improper way, that people deserved to be able to fight for the wishes within their heart. And the first step she took to make that dream a reality was by going to the wishing tree that she had spent time with her father at. And there she made a selfless wish to have the citizens of Rosas be able to live a better life. The ramifications of that wish was the fact that Star descended from the heavens to be able to help her. And the burst of magic that came from that, that provided joy to all of the citizens of the kingdom of Rosas, ensured that Asha and King Magnifico would have to face one another. Now throughout most of King Magnifico's time as king, the magic that he was using was described in the art book of Wish to be illusion magic. For the most part, it was only meant to awe and dazzle the people of Rosas so that they could be in love with him and see him as a superstar and someone who was truly good. But after discovering Star's existence, he decided to turn to an ancient and forbidden magic. Now the book that King Magnifico uses is donned with a dragon on it and a green gem, which is meant to pay homage to Maleficent and the dragon that she becomes, while also being reminiscent of the evil queen's spell book. But another source of magic that I kept thinking about while seeing Magnifico use these powers was also Dr. Facilier's friends from the other side. We were told that by using the forbidden magic, he would be forever bound to the evil that he was unleashing. And that would inevitably lead to his own demise. Until then though, he was able to create an all powerful scepter that would be able to contain Star's magic. To attempt to defeat Magnifico though, Asha knew that Star and her little goat Valentino wouldn't be unable to take him on. So she teamed up with her friends from Rosas. And did you notice that Asha's friends were meant to resemble the seven dwarves? Dahlia was meant to be similar to Doc. Bazimo was like Bashful. Dario was like Dopey. Gabo was like Grumpy. Hal was happy. 
Simon was sleepy and Safi was sneezy. All of those friends, Valentino and Star, were sent to Magnifico's castle to set free all of the wishes for the people of Rosas. But it was a trap laid by Magnifico to capture Star. Magnifico was able to contain Star, and by using all of that magic, he pulled all of the light from the stars in the sky into his staff. He cast a cloud of darkness over the people of Rosas and restrained them all, and it seemed hopeless until Asha remembered that they were all made of stars. You see, Wish brings up the fact that we are all created from stars, that when stars supernova, they create all the heavy elements that eventually become us. So when Asha and all of the citizens of Rosas begin to sing, the stardust within their heart begins to glow. And together, all of the magic that exists within their hearts is able to neutralize Magnifico's forbidden magic. The combined power of the citizens of Rosas is able to free Star, and that happens just before Magnifico is sucked within his staff. Now, the reason I think that probably happens is the fact that he is tied to the forbidden magic forever. And since he failed to collect all of the magic from all of the light within the stars of the night sky, maybe he had to provide a soul for the evil forbidden magic. That's the same thing that happens to Dr. Facilier when he can no longer offer up the souls of New Orleans to his friends from the other side. He had to pay back his debt by providing his own soul. But regardless of the reason, Magnifico is imprisoned within his mirrored staff. And within the giant blast that occurs during that magical moment, we see a mask that resembles the slave within the magic mirror. Now, even though King Magnifico was removed from his throne, the kingdom of Rosas will live on. It's actually his wife, Amaya, who decides to step up to be queen. She was sympathetic to Asha and her friends and was willing to fight against Magnifico once it was revealed that he was becoming selfish, power hungry, and ruthless. All of the wishes that Magnifico had taken were able to be returned to the citizens who gave them up. And now under Queen Amaya, Rosas was free to pursue their own wishes. But I think the most exciting part of Wish's ending was when Asha was given a magic wand. Well, Star had given Asha a magical twig to use to lure Magnifico out of the kingdom, this was different. Before Star returned to the heavens, he bestowed Asha with a true magic wand to help others as they followed their dreams. Now, Asha's wand resembles the one that Fairy Godmother used in Cinderella. The cloak and hood that Asha wears is also inspired by that same woman. And all of her friends and all of the citizens of Rosas encourage Asha to be their fairy godmother, which means that Asha is the first fairy godmother. While Asha had once hoped to be Magnifico's apprentice, now she was actually living out the mission that she believed he had. She was destined to help the citizens of Rosas make their wishes come true. There were a lot of wild wishes going on within Rosas. There were some people that wanted to fly into the sky on a ship. Valentino wished for a world where animals could live in peace, which is most likely Zootopia. But the first person who she was able to help make their wish come true was her great-grandfather, Sabino. After 100 years of life, Sabino was able to finally create something to inspire future generations. After the credits of Wish, we were shown that Sabino was the person who wrote When You Wish Upon a Star, a song that would be sung by Jiminy Cricket and generations of people around the world. And now Asha will be able to help all of the Kingdom of Rosas make those dreams come true. And I hope you will be able to as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a very magical rest of your day.